We're here today with World War II Navy veteran Ernie Andrus. Um, thank you for being here, Ernie. Um, Ernie has crossed the United States one time from the West Coast to the East Coast, and he is on his way back from the East Coast back to the West Coast. So he stopped in today to talk to us about um, his mission, um, his journey, and his life, you know, in general. So welcome. Well, you're welcome. My, my name is Ernie Andrus. Uh, born in Kansas, lived most of my life in K Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. Joined the Navy in Los Angeles as soon as the war broke out. Uh, I was uh, cruising the streets of Los Angeles with my uh, buddy, look, picking up chicks, you know, my model <laughs> roaster. And a radio came on and said, Pearl Harbor just been bombed. Right. So I looked at my buddy and I says, where's Pearl Harbor? He says, I don't know, I think we're at war, let's go join the Navy. Okay, and then, so you served in the Navy in World War II and then you served on a, a ship that you now are working towards well, the, uh, permanently memorializing, first, is that correct? The first part of the war I, I served on, on a, we call it an AP, at, uh, and that's uh, uh, troop transport, because mm -hmm. uh, I was hospital corps. Okay. So we take troops overseas and bring the wounded back. Mm -hmm. After a few trips to that, I went out to New Caledonia in the South Pacific. I took a merchant marine ship back out there, and then I got aboard the LST, landing ship tank. Okay. We called them large, slow target. <laughs> but uh, then we did the island hopping, taking all the islands back away from the Japanese. Okay. So let's talk about, I know you have, uh, you you were very proud of the work you did in the war and all, all of, I'm sure, your fellow uh, s servants in the war. And now, today, you are sort of on this mission to raise money for the restoration of that ship. So tell us about that and why you started that and, and well, what's going on with your journey here. I, would, I joined the, uh, 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 the LST Association. Okay. And uh, we would started looking for a for an LST, uh, for a memorial, and there was none left. <coughs> out, of, <coughs> excuse me, out of 1,051 that were built, there was just none left. Uh, so about 10 years of looking, one of my, my shipmates spotted one, some over in, in uh, Greece. Okay. Because in 1964, we, the United States gave a bunch of ships to the G Greeks to rebuild their Hellenic Navy. Mm -hmm. So they were getting ready to scrap them. They said they're obsolete, 1999. So he went over to see if he could get one. They said, well, you gave it to us, and we'll give it back to you. Okay. And uh, so we went over, and we spent about four months making it seaworthy, cleaning it up, replacing all the parts, and repairing everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after fighting our red tape here in the United States, right. we finally was able to, we just took off. In fact, they wouldn't, the State Department wouldn't let us go. The Coast Guard advised against it and said it was impossible. They couldn't bring that old ship back. Uh, and we knew that the new pe young people couldn't do it because they needed their computers. <laughs> but us old guys knew how to do it. And so we, we just saved as a, sailed as a pirate ship. <clears throat> we brought it on into Mobile. Nobody else was going to let us in, but Mobile said, welcome, come on in. Okay. And how long did that take? I mean, the trip itself, the actual trip. Oh, well, uh, we, we went from the Isle of Crete over to Athens just overnight. <laughs> Made it pretty good. Uh, from uh, Athens to uh, Gibraltar took us 13 days because this old ship was everything, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Right, so it wasn't like you just got in it and you sailed right oh, yeah. to Mobile. Everything was going wrong. By the time we got to Gibraltar, we knew what had to be fixed. <clears throat> and the people in Gibraltar were great. They, they said, uh, you guys go out and enjoy this, yourselves, you know, and you do some sightseeing. He says, we'll send a crew in and fix everything for you. Oh, good. So uh, anyhow, it took another 29 days to get from, uh, from Gibraltar to Mobile. The journey. And uh, we lost, we signed up 70 men to start with, but we started losing them over the years because all the red tape it took to get everything going. Mm -hmm. uh, we were down to 29 men. 
when you came when you came into Mobile. In fact, I was even on it. I had to get off in Gibraltar because it busted a vein in my foot. Uh huh. And I I got back on it when it pulled into Mobile. So it's here now. Uh, it is in Evansville, Indiana now. Mm -hmm. In the United States. Yeah, and uh, we take it around to different ports. They just this year they took it down to. Uh, I was out running, so I was on it last year. But this year I was out running, so they took it down to uh, Tennessee and, and Alabama. Mm -hmm. So how did you come up with the idea to do a cross-country run to make money f to help well, keep their I, ship actually, restored? Well, uh, I was. Um, I heard about a friend. A friend of mine was telling me about a guy from Great Britain that was running across every country. And uh, it, when he came through Prescott, Arizona, he put him up overnight there. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, gee, that like, sounds like something fun to do. Right. So actually, when I did my first 200-mile relay, uh, I was 88 years old, and nobody my age had done it, so I, I got a lot of attention. And I thought, gee, if an 88-year-old man doing a, a relay gets this much attention, how about a 90-year-old man running coast to coast? <laughs> Uh, maybe I can raise enough money to take this ship back to Normandy for a D-Day memorial. Yes. Uh, I talked to the skipper, and he said, it'll never happen. I said, eh, I can try. Right. So i just been to trying to raise the money. I've raised quite a bit for them, but never enough to get it back to Normandy. So the, you, you've already come across the country once because yeah, you stopped I, in and visited us once I, before. I started when I was 90 years old. Okay. I finished one day after my 93rd birthday. Uh -huh. And then after a couple of years of being bored, I decided to go back the other way. So I am 96 now and heading back for California. So how long does it take you to cross the country uh, generally? It, well, it took me two, two years and 10 months. And I took seven weeks off for different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking no time off now because I'm not running the distance anymore. Mm -hmm. it's gonna, I'll be 100 years old by the time I finish. So what can people, so how can, you're raising money and how, how does that work? How can people help you with well, your cause uh, to raise uh, the money? When people come, I like to people come run with me. Because okay. like I say, I do, mostly I was doing this for the fun of it. Sure. That's what's fun, meeting all my old friends that I met coming across. Uh, and they make donations. And uh, I have my book, uh, Bare Feet to Running Shoes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk it's a little bit about your book. Okay. And uh, if they make a nice donation, I autograph a book for them. Or, and we have shirts. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have a website, mm -hmm. coast2coastruns.com. Okay. Which you use a number two. Right. And you can always go on there and, uh, and make donations. You can either sponsor me or make a donation to the ship. Okay. And I also noticed that you have your Facebook page where people can keep up with your runs that uh, you do. And... Find out where you're going to be the next day. Yeah, I uh, I post before and after every run. Okay. I never know for sure where to tell them to find get onto the face Facebook because there's three of them and the one I'm maxed out with five thousand. They only allow me five thousand friends. I see. But you can still get on there and, and see can, what's going on. You can see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So which one is that? I know. Is that Ernest Andrus? Uh, I think it's Ernest and There's two Ernest Andrus's. There's okay. somebody who opened another one for me. And then I believe but Coast But it is an Ernest Andrus, mm -hmm. Ernest Andrus something. Okay. So what will we learn about you in your book, uh, Barefoot to Running Shoes? Well, it's all the way from my birth right up until now. Okay. Any particular fun stories that stand out in your mind that you'd like to share? Well, uh, people are always asking me how long I've been running. <clears throat> and so I tell them that my mother said I stood up at eight months and I didn't walk, I ran. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been running all your life. So I learned, you could walk. I learned to walk when I was 40 because <laughs> my second wife kept telling me to slow down. <laughs> so, so tell us some of your favorite things about these cross-country trips. Okay, uh, I've met some wonderful people. A uh, lot more good people in this world than there is bad. And that's all I've met is good people, and thousands of them. Uh, and it's just been all fun for me. And that's why I decided to do it again, because all the pleasures in life have dwindled away, you know, and the one thing I still like to do is run. Mm -hmm. And even though I can't run as well anymore, I run slower, I run shorter distance, but it's still fun. Right. So tell me this. Um, I know that you kind of you kind of touched on why it's it's so dear to your heart, but um, tell us 
about your kind of connection with the the ship and the people you served with and and you know why it's so so important to you well to do this? i think uh almost any, any uh sailor that had served on a ship uh they love the ship mm -hmm. uh it's like a person to you you know in fact the greeks the only reason to be able to get this they don't believe in sinking a ship it's they said as a they say it has a soul and uh it just means a lot to you. Uh, I know we call her the lady, the great lady. Mm -hmm. you know? And ultimately, tell people what you would like to see happen to the ship. And uh, I would like to see it go back to Normandy for a D-Day memorial and come back, but I'll bring it back. I don't want to leave it there. Right. Uh, right now, uh, they said the Coast Guard won't let us take it out into the ocean. And so we just take it up and down the rivers. Mm -hmm. So uh, they decided when they replaced the plumbing, they did it with the modern stuff. That would never hold up on the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I don't think we could take it as is across the Atlantic on its own power. So or it, needs it. More, it needs more We'd work. have to have it hauled over and sure. back. Uh, we could put it in the water over there and mm -hmm. beach it where it beached, in, you know, on D-Day, then haul it back. Unless we redo the whole plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, is there anything else that you want to share about um, your journey or how people can get involved to help? Anything at all that you want to touch on? Well, uh, outside of coming and run with me, uh, I can always use support. Uh, you can go on to, coast, to coastruns.com and get all the information there and make donations if you like. You can even uh, order a book or, or a shirt. Okay. All right. Well, we thank you so much for, number one, stopping in to see us today in the middle of your trip. And uh, it's great to see you in St. Tammany for a second time, for sure. And um, we encourage everyone to just get out and meet up with Ernie. Um, visit Coast to Coast Runs, coast, number two, coastruns.com and you can uh, make a donation and help Ernie uh, with his cause. So thank you so much for being here. All right, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.